Oh, he is here, okay. Alright, there he, there he is. Uh -huh. Okay, let me go. Uh, so this has got to come behind the Skype. Yeah, I hear you. Hang on. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I think I should put some headsets on though. So I can hear you better. Just get the headsets in. So we're going. All right. Just get this going. Good. And we choose them. Headphones. Okay. Excellent. Okay. How are you, Christian? I'm not hearing. You sound like you're way in the background. I don't see you in Canada. Well, you're not going to see me in Skype. You're gonna. You have to look at your uh, your computer. Okay, okay. And then you'll see it broadcast, and you're going to see it broadcast with a delay. Yes, I think. So you're going to have to get used to that delay. So everything that you say or you hear me say to you is going to happen. About 15 seconds later. All right now, I'm having trouble hearing your voice, so I'm going to put you on the screen. I'm just trying to get my my headset untied. <laughs> All right, let me. I'll deal with that later. Let's get you up so we can see your face. There you are. Give you a little more room there. I'm not getting a very good resolution on you. And I'm not getting much sound, but I have a picture of some kind. There we go. Can you see yourself better now? Yes, yes. There we go. Yeah, and I'm hearing you faintly. Uh, is there any way you could speak closer to the microphone, possibly? Yeah, your your broadband connection leaves a lot to be desired because you're getting a very very low level uh, resolution. Yes, I have the microphone on the on the screen. There we go. Oh, that's great. Oh yeah. You know, I don't need your picture if I can hear you that good. Well, okay, we could do we could do it. But yes. Uh, but uh, your resolution on Skype is horrible. Yes, I have a horrible camera. <laughs> oh. Well, that's how it is. So where where are you? Now uh, I'm in my bedroom. In oh, okay. I can't tell. I can't tell where you are. You know, but you're you're in you're in you're in uh, South Africa, is it? Yes, Argentina. Ar Argentina. Okay. Yeah, Argentina. South Africa. Oh my God. South, South America. South America, not South Africa. South America. No, no, hang on. Let me. I, let, hang on a second. Yes. Wow, so you're a classical percussionist from South America. Yes, that's right. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> so I, I studied that when I finished my school, high school, and I already like drums, and, and I studied piano too when I was a child. But, uh -huh. but I in, get interested in orchestral music because the, the, the thing of the technique and the, and the, and the, the finesse of the, of, the, of the playing. Mm -hmm. So... Now I, I, I start to, to study when I finish high school and start to play in orchestra and I play in the orchestra of, of Teatro Colón in Buenos Aires mm -hmm. a few years. So I get a really get great job, but I was like boring, <laughs> like counting bars and yeah, I, I know. want to play something else, like be more creative. Yeah. So, well, That's I was I was lucky. I I got the idea before I graduated. Huh. <laughs> I, I I got what it was going to be like. That you you have more easily. Yeah, I avoided it altogether. You know, in fact, I dropped out of school after I didn't graduate. I huh. dropped out 
after a couple of years, I said, I didn't want to take that path. Uh -huh. I thought it was a way, and they didn't, you know, when I was going to, uh, to school, uh, they, didn't rec they didn't recognize the drums as an instrument. So you couldn't... Uh, at that time. Yeah, you couldn't study drums in... in uh, well, in, in, in the conservatory here in Buenos Aires, they don't recognize two, uh, because it's like uh, only percussion, uh, orchestral percussion. You, yeah, you know, that's the way it was. You uh, can study drums at... Yeah. It's like They're, a very conservatory. Yeah, that's the way it used to be here, all over the United States. But now it's different. Now it's Every, different. Yeah, everywhere you go, you can you can study, uh, you know, uh, uh, vinyl uh, uh -huh. uh, technique in, in school yeah. now. <laughs> you could be, you could study DJ. <laughs> you so have all the possibility. Yeah. So, but it was very boring in the old days when all you could do was classical music. Yes. No, I was very interested in, in that, in timpani and in, in xylophone and marimba, but I, I, uh, I, don't, I don't, uh, was really good on, on, on mallets, so I prefer yeah. timpani and, and bass drum and cymbals and snare drum, so. Yeah, I, I had the same experience. I wasn't a, yeah, I, I wasn't play a, a lot of piano, but, so I, I have that thing. Yeah, well, yeah, the piano, Minor piano requirements were very good to go through. Yes. I learned so, a little bit about theory. I took a little bit of sight singing. It was very, you know, it opened right. up my musicianship tremendously. Yes, the, that, reading two clefs. Uh, yeah, two clefs, you know, more than two clefs, three clefs. Well, you know. three clefs too, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, that, I, I, I think I have the, the harmonic and melodic part I have from the piano. So I don't get interest, interested in malice. Yeah, that's that's the problem with a lot. Most musicians, they either they're either most players who don't play a rhythm instrument, they're really good at the harmonic stuff. Yes. And they 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 stink at the rhythm. And most rhythm players are really good at the rhythm, and they're not so good at the harmonic stuff. That's right. Yes. But you really you need to have you need to be in both worlds. I think that's yeah that's yeah. that's the thing. Yes. That I am a guitar player, but I play in my in my jazz quartet. Uh, he's really good guitarist, but he have uh, several problems with rhythm. So now he's studying with a, a teacher that that gives the, the 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 rhythm part. So he's much better now in in playing because he are very conscious of the rhythm uh, yeah, yeah. part of uh, the music. Now he knows what the rhythm section is doing. Yes. He knows where they are. Yes, that's right. You know, so that, you, and I, and I get respect because I play piano and I can I, I can say to a guitar player, uh, you're you're doing a minor chord or, or that right. section. So, or, so you know where he is too. See, that's, that's what right, yes. that's what the communication is about. Is where everybody knows where everybody is and what everybody's doing. Yes, the the, the, the thing I I found very difficult in drum sets now uh, today I'm still finding it difficult is that it's enough uh, it's in an abstract instrument, uh, so I think I very very times I think uh, it's very difficult to to think melodically uh, sometimes in the drum set. Okay. <laughs> to me, to me nowadays it's still a, a big challenge to 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 well, do you, it well. You have to give up the Western tonal system. What's that? You know the thirteen chromatic notes and the the you know ah yes half tone whole tone relationships and intervals you have to give up all of that yes you know I I mean not 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 the theoretics of yes. it but I'm, I'm talking talking about you know our instruments are not based on that uh -huh. you know we we have we we have a million notes that are not there exactly yes. <laughs> You can't write. You can't write that down. It's no, still, you can't notate that. No, you know. We so, can. so to me, drums music was always, and this is a problem, uh, I think today. Drum music was always a uh, just an indication to the drummer, and the drummer had to create the real part. Yes. You know, and I think the mistake has been made, yes. where people think that. You no, know, they're supposed to be able to read every note on the page and play exactly, and they're supposed to write down exactly what they're going to play, every note they're going to play. Yes, that's right. You know, and I come from the the idea of doing transcriptions in the learning process. You know, 
and it's nice. It's nice to transcribe just to see somebody did, but no, nobody uh, creates music like that. No, that's great. You know? And I guess I think it's dangerous when you try. I've seen people try to write drum parts who weren't drummers, uh -huh. who didn't really understand that, and uh, you know, and if they, and they didn't understand that they need to let go of whatever they wrote, also. And that could create a could create a, a real problem, you know. Yes. If people people understand that, that you're right, it's a it's a it's an ethereal instrument. It's the primitive. No, the thing the things is that I see nowadays in, in the whole world, not not here in Argentina, in the whole world, is like a a fashion playing drums. Like uh, there, there's a lot of of gospel jobs that. Uh, yeah. Well. They, uh, it's a lot of people that play great. But I, I can't do that. I, I don't know. I can't do that. I can't do it. It's like I'm always thinking more <coughs> musically, more <coughs> classical. Like. Yeah. So I can't understand. I, I, I'm like uh, overwhelmed when I see that because it's great. It's, it's, it's great to see a drummer do that. But I think I, I'm not in that way. So I, I the first uh, <coughs> time when I was uh, discovering Billy Martin in, in YouTube, that then I, I realized that he was your pupil and playing in Medeski Martin and Wood. Uh, I really love with that concept of the undrumming, like he says. <laughs> great. Yeah, think, don't think in, 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 in drums when you're playing. That's for me is great. It's opened my mind. Yes, yeah. Billy has opened my mind too. I mean, he's, re he's changed. Uh, yes. He's done a lot for me. I don't even want to go into it. It's all on the video if you really want to, if you really want to know, watch episode one. Yes, <laughs> I, I saw that, yes, I saw that. <laughs> I'm telling everybody else, if you really want to know what we're talking about, watch episode one. And Yes, I saw it the other day, and, yeah. and that was a great conversation between Yeah, I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to say it again here, live. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm no, it's okay, <laughs> but I'm glad you mentioned it, so I'm just telling people, to, I'm directing them to the episode so they okay. can see, so they can get in on it as well. Yes. That's, so I, I get in love with that concept of undrumming. So for me, yeah. it's, it's more difficult. More, you have to be very creative and yeah, Billy. Think. Yeah, he does not. Uh, he does no preparation. I was talking about this earlier. I, uh, I've what I've learned from him was to let everything go. Everything's uh, an improv yeah. now. But the, like the, you, you say the other day, uh, free the mental blocks. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want to do. But I, you know, but I don't prepare anything. I mean, you know, the, the materials that I'm teaching, I've been teaching for years, so there's a lot of preparation in that. The preparation yes. was, the, was the previous times that I taught it. But I was saying earlier, it's like when I did the master class with, uh, with Sam on, on Masses, Masses 2. Yes. I hadn't, I hadn't looked at any of that material before I did that master class. Uh -huh. I was sight reading most of that. It, the whole thing, the whole thing was, an op, was an improv. Sam knew what he was doing. Yes. So I, I did no... Yeah, he, he didn't read it. He worked on the book with Joe. Oh, oh, great, great. He transcribed the book. He was got transcription credit. Uh, he, was, he was the guy that, that, that helped him to do the... the yeah, he wrote, right. He put it together with him. And, and, ah, okay, and, I understand. So that's why I asked him to do it with me. Because I really didn't know the book at all. I've been working with Masters 1. Yes, and I, I used the first uh, couple of warm-ups, which I did earlier. I was uh -huh, yes, I saw it, yes. And uh, I mean, I would have never done something like that before I worked with Billy recently. I mean, you know, doing that DVD with him and taking that master class. Yes. And uh, I mean, I mean, because that's the way everything is. It was not only playing the drums. I mean, everything we do is like that. All of those videos are improvs, basically. Yes, I love, I love that DVD. You know, we don't work with, we don't work with scripts. We don't, you know, we work with, we usually have a, some sort of an outline or an idea of, of what we want to do, but we don't, uh, rehearse anything and we don't write anything down. Yes, I understand. Yeah, the yeah. other day I, I was uh, recording in a studio. Uh, I have to, to record drum sets uh, for uh, like a short film and I have to watch the, the images and play simultaneously. So it was great. Right. Like, you, do you have uh, Birdman, the movie Birdman? Oh, yeah, great movie, yeah. Like mm -hmm. that. I have to do it that thing it was it was it was oh. great to do it oh man that sounds wonderful when i have the the recording i i will send you 
Yeah, I'm jealous. I would love to do something <laughs> like that. No, yeah. it's great. I, I never do it before, so so for me it was a great, and I think it's the thing I most love to do. Uh, Improv is is the ultimate to me. Yes. It's a, it's the, I saw it's that highest, movie. It was I was stunning. To me, it's the highest level of musicianship. Yes. Improvisational playing. There's nothing. There's nothing, you know, on a higher level than that. You know, because I've been in, the, yes, I've been in the studio and and work with yeah. the, the the movie maker. It's it's great. Like yeah. Well, with another people that is not a musician, but they have the concept in her mind. So, yeah, right. You, it's art as art. Yes, of course. Yes. You know, it crosses lines. It's the, the, the what you're trying to communicate can be communicated in a lot of different mediums. Of course. Yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, you know, you know, uh, Billy uses several mediums. I mean, he uses art. He's an artist, and he paints. Yes, I, I saw his paintings. I you know, and and also being a director is also a medium of art for him. Yeah. So he he's, he expresses himself in a lot of different ways, not just in playing the drums. Yes, he's he's great. So you know, he, uh, Billy, it redirect redirected me to you. So I understand then when why. Oh, so you so you discovered me through Billy. That's right. Yeah, because oh, I saw I the DVD. Yeah. And I love it, the, the conversation you have with, about Joe Morel you know, and the, the relaxed yeah. technique and that thing. So yeah, I, he, I discovered he, you from him, yes. He didn't tell me he was going to do that. He told uh, me no? I, Is it like that? No, so? he told me I was going to I was going to interview him and then he his, I felt like I got ambushed <laughs> on camera. I didn't know what to do. So. No, that's great. That's that's uh, DVD is great. <laughs> yeah. So, but but that's I have him to thank. I mean, I was he. This is what he meant to do. He meant to introduce me to people who yes. didn't know who well, I was. Well, he did well. He did well. <laughs> yeah, he did great, didn't he? He really did. He did me a great service. He really did. So I'm trying to give it back. This is why. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to give it back, and you're you're one of the people who benefit from that, Christian. Yes, I I, I really like I said I. I I rediscovered these books that I used, of course, in my in my education. But when you go to a conservatory, you have to do it like because you are like falling like a program, so you don't pay yeah. attention. Now yeah. that I'm I'm finished the career a, a few years ago. It's great because I have no rush, so I'm here in my home and with my books and mm -hmm. videos or your tech talks are great because. I rediscovered these books, and so I'm very happy to. to okay, thank you. I, I, it makes me feel good to know that that you know, that I I was able to to do that for you. Great. You know, it's really nice of you to to come on here and say that. And I'm going just for that. I'm going to make a YouTube video of this and show it to everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Today, you know, an orchestral percussion from Argentina. <laughs> That's right, Christian Dolberg. You know, uh, uh, you've been here before. He's been. He asked me questions before. I, actually, you are in a video already. Yes. I, I put your name on one because you asked. Yes, me some I saw questions. it. I saw it. Yes. You asked me some questions in the chat room, and then uh, they were such good questions, and I used them as an archive. I, so I gave you credit for the questions, even though nobody heard or saw you. But now there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Hi there. Back. Yeah. I'm so I'm so glad that you you decided to come and show us your face and. Let us hear your voice and tell us your story. It's an honor. It's an honor. Here in Argentina, we we are very like uh, we have a, a really good library now from the the all the, the books that you have there because drum set is like it's an instrument that evolved in in, in the U.S. It's, it's, it's like that. Well, yeah, and, it's it it started here. You're yes, right. it started there. Yeah. So here we have we have to look up there to to get the information. So it's, yeah. it's great to speak with, with someone from there because... Yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of great players here, man. What? A lot of, lot, there's a lot of great players here. Now, I'm, in yes. New York. I'm in New York. I was lucky. I was born in New York. Yeah, New York is like <laughs> the main... I don't I didn't have to go anywhere. Yes, that, that's right. You know, I got on the train and I was there. It was like, holy mackerel. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't, you know, the first time I, I was, I was, oh, how old was I? I went to see a Broadway show. Uh-huh. 
I must have been eight years old. <laughs> and I went to see a music man and they had a 32 piece orchestra. I, I remember it was the first time I ever heard live music. And when they started the overture, I was stunned. Eight years old. And I, I really believed that it was, that was the beginning of my whole path. Was I could not I believe it. It's the same thing that, that passed to me when I was a child, went to Teatro Colón in Buenos Aires, and mm -hmm. I saw the timpanis in the, in the orchestra, and I think, what? I have to do this. <laughs> yeah, it was just, I could not believe the sound of what I was hearing. Yes. yes. You know. And that turned me on to music, it turned me on to theater, it turned me on to dance, it turned me, you know. Yes, all the kind of arts, yes. It, all the, it opened all of the arts for me, you know, and I had no idea I was going to become involved with any of it at that time. I was eight years old. I didn't start playing until I was 12. Yeah, I think I, I, I think so I started playing piano when I was I think, 12, too, yes. Yeah. Which is a good time to start, but you know. I really started with drums very, very later, <laughs> like 18, I think. <laughs> That's good, but you can get distracted. You know, you you don't follow the harmonic path. Yes. yes. When you play drums, you get lazy, because you don't yeah. <laughs> you, you don't have to, so you don't. You know, I, 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 don't know. You know, I never honestly, can do that because I start to play classical music, so I I, know. I never get lazy. <laughs> but but I I have to be honest, you know. I mean that that. That attitude was in my head before I, I went to school. You know, it was I played rock yes, and roll? Of course, yes. You know, and and uh, I was happy to play two and four.